I think I might have accidentally tacked it to the axle housing. Hey everyone, this is the continuation of the T-Bucket axle repair project. The first part of this was taking the entire front end off. What kind of started this whole thing was the heim joint right here on the radius arm on the driver's side pulled out. The threads got stripped on the back and so I was getting a pretty severe death wobble. This is also bent and needs some work anyway. Also, the previous owner thought that the axle was cracking and cut it in half, sleeved it with this thin wall tube on the inside, and then tried to weld it back together. The weld didn't hold and it started actually cracking again. So now I'm up to the point where I've cut this axle in half I need to get the old sleeve out. I have a new tube to re-sleeve it that is quarter wall, so this will actually be a half inch wall in the middle, which is should be pretty strong. And then I need to clean this up and prepare it for welding. I've been trying to think of ways to remove this existing sleeve that's in here, including welding something to it, maybe like welding a nut inside and then using a bolt attached to a, a puller to pull it out. Uh, potentially reaching in there with some kind of... Here we are again for the third attempt to try to get this old sleeve out. This job would have been a lot easier had this not been previously fixed before, but since it was, that's where we are at. I did get a new piece of sleeve material. This is inch and a half DOM, just steel tubing. My first attempt of using a reciprocating saw to cut slots and try to break the sleeve out. That failed. The second attempt of welding in a washer, one of these big fender style washers, and then using a slap hammer style puller. That just deformed the washer and eventually broke the welds. And so now I am on to attempt number three and hopefully third time is the charm. I picked up a large step bit. It was very difficult to find one that goes up to inch and a half, which is exactly what I need. But unfortunately, for some reason, this step bit has an extra step on it. So I'm not really gonna be able to use this as I intended of drilling all the way as far as I need to. I did get an extension so I could I could go in there more than what the drill would just allow me. But again, this isn't gonna work as I intended. What I'm, I might do is try to just open up the opening here to an inch and a half. Then I got a smaller, it only goes up to an inch and three eighths but that will get me closer and I'm gonna try to go some distance into this axle housing with that. And then I'm gonna try to use a just regular hole saw, an inch and a half hole saw. I'm not a huge fan of having to do this. The advantage to these step bits is that they don't really need a guide as long as you have an existing hole and they sort of self-center themselves. So it's really nice to get to know you're drilling exactly in the middle. These aren't necessarily that. They will work in theory, but I'm hoping that I can get, get it started enough to remain square. And then having already gone through it with the inch and three eighths, there shouldn't be very much material left to remove. And hopefully that these will just have to do the final opening it up to an inch and a half so then I can finally sleeve it with this. So that's the plan. I did get another extension for the hole saw so I can extend that in. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I also got these low grit sandpaper flap discs that are for a drill and an inch and a half. So I think I can feed that in there after the fact and sort of hone it a little bit to its final dimension. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is ratchet strap this axle housing down to this table. 
just so it doesn't move very much and I can use the drill a bit more confidently. So I'm gonna get this strap down. I'm gonna try this first, this step bit, then maybe this one to open it up to the inch and a half. I'll only be able to do it for the size of the step and hopefully that's enough to then feed this in and It's going to be slow. I don't know how far in I'm going to get, um, but it does seem to be working pretty nicely. At just removing the sleeve, the old sleeve, the new sleeve is sliding in, so that's going to work. It's just going to be a matter of how far in can I actually drill before I either ruin the hole saw or something else happens. Um, also, by the way, this is just Marvel Mystery Oil I'm using as just a lubricant for the, the bits. It took a while. I don't, I think this bit is pretty dull at this point, but as you can see from the worn off paint, I was able to get the entire depth of the bit drilled out into the end of the tube that's less than what i had anticipated on doing considering the length of the sleeve that i bought but i think that much on both sides will actually be pretty strong and i drew this blue line on the axle the length of the the depth of the cut so I can now go ahead and drill a couple of rosette welds or holes for rosette welds or plug welds. Basically, you drill a hole and after you sleeve it, the hole is only gonna be in the outside material and it will be, the surface of the inside material will be visible through the hole. And then you just weld around in that hole and it just is one more way to make this joint even stronger to prevent it from twisting to prevent it from pulling out that sort of thing so i'm probably going to do a rosette weld on the top and the bottom on both sides of the joint so there'll be four in total plus the weld that's going around the butt weld and i think that's going to end up being pretty strong I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that. Next thing, while I have this sort of tightened down still, I'm just going to go ahead and drill the two holes. And then I need to clean up the edge. I already started to a little bit trying to clean up that washer that I welded in here. But basically, I'm just going to chamfer this edge a bit. So when I do weld it, I can get all the way down to the sleeve material and actually get penetration into the sleeve material and then weld up the, the seam. So I wouldn't be surprised if it takes two passes around to fill up this gap, but that combined with the four plug welds and this should be a very solid joint.
it's chamfered, it's cleaned up, the inside is sanded, there's a rosette hole drilled on both sides, and this half of the axle is pretty much completely prepped and ready for welding. So now it's just to do the other half. I'm not going to video that because it's going to be the same as this half. And once both halves are ready to go, then we can move on to the next step. Both sides are done. If you want to see how I did this side, just go back and watch how I did this side again. They are both chamfered on the end to clean up how the metal was. There are two plug weld holes already drilled in each half. And now I just need to cut a section of the sleeve material and then I can set all of this up and try to get it straight and weld it. The slug is cut. It fits nicely in both sides of the axle. All I'm going to do is wire brush the surface of this clean in preparation for welding. And then there's only one thing left to do. Unfortunately, my camera battery died while I was doing getting the setup wrapped up, but this is what I ended up with. I had to take the spindles off just because it was getting in the way. I couldn't get the axle to lay in a position where they weren't causing a problem. And it turns out that both of the kingpins were just held in with gravity. There is a lock bolt here that corresponds with a flat spot on the kingpin. But as you can see, it's not really long enough to, to do anything. So uh, that will be something that needs to be fixed. But that said, they came out pretty easy. I have the axle set up. I have two pieces of angle iron and these clamps, which I know aren't super robust clamps, but they should be fine. Pinching the axle, holding it as square as possible. It's resting on these two legs of the bat wings on each side. To make sure that I have everything the way that it needs to be, I took a previous measurement of the distance between these friction shock mounts, and it's within an eighth of an inch, so I think that's going to be fine. As far as the important caster angle on both sides that has to be as close as possible to matching so i picked up this uh it's i think for you stick it it's magnetic and you stick it to a table saw blade and then it can tell you the angle of the table saw blade so just to do a reference check on this side of the table it is one and a half degrees and then when I stick it to this part of the axle, it shows 68 and a half degrees. So then coming to this side of the table, I get the same one, one and a half degrees on the table. And then stick it to the end. And I get the same... 68 and a half degrees angle here. So uh, according to this tool, my caster angles are basically exactly the same, which is just important in general, but that's going to make sure that my steering is the way that it needs to be once I get it all back together. So now the only thing left to do is 
I have this set up. I have the sleeve inside. I have both of these beveled and I have a little bit of space to be able to get in there with the welder. And what I'm gonna do is tack it on this side, come over to the other side, tack it on this side, and then probably take off this top piece of angle iron and then do a weld all the way across while also uh, periodically rechecking everything. Getting to the home stretch of this repair, Here it is, tacked up. We are right at 68 on this side. And sixty-eight on this side. And looking at this pretty straight edge, it's pretty straight. So now it's just a matter of welding this up. And here it is, fully welded all the way around. And this kingpin is sitting right at 69 degrees. And this kingpin is sitting right at 69 degrees. So in theory, the most important part of the axle, which is the orientation of the two kingpins relative to each other, which make up the caster. And that affects if it pulls one way or the other way and just is kind of a baseline fundamental thing for being able to set up the alignment correctly. Uh, it looks like those are pretty much as close as they can be. I'm pretty confident in this weld. This looks like a little little divot 
but it's actually just a, a dark spot. The rosette welds or the plug welds are very solid. I spent quite a bit of time pooling against the slug inside or against the sleeve inside to make sure that I had a lot of good penetration on the slug and then slowly backed out and filled the plug. So there's a lot of material in all four of the plug welds. And then also this is a pretty solid, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this main weld all the way around. Let's flip it over to see the other side. So it looks pretty good. Yeah, now on to sanding it. All welded up, sanded smooth, all the way around. Looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's going to be pretty strong. I think if anything happens with this axle, it's going to be not this weld and so that's it for this video next video is going to be reinstalling it a little bit of talking about Ackerman angle and the steering probably and then maybe a test drive uh, make sure everything's working still so yeah that's it thanks so much for watching please like and subscribe comment below with anything that you want to say check the description for links for different things that I've used like this really nice welding vest. And uh, yeah, till next time. Thanks again.